Hi, thank you for taking the time to watch this short video briefing. To introduce myself, my name is Liam Hussey, I'm the Digital Safeguarding Leader at Almost and Bollingbrook Academy and this video is going to present to predominantly parents and carers about online safety for young people uh, to tie in with Safer Internet Day. So just to introduce you to what Safer Internet Day is, it's a global initiative that is celebrated by schools, colleges, workplaces, many other organisations to raise awareness about online safety. And this is something that at OBA we mark quite considerably with a range of different activity uh, for staff, for students, for parents and carers, also working with the school governors and our partners at Ormiston Academies Trust. So to explain or outline on online safety, we can divide online safety into four key strands really. And these are visible on screen here. Now you can pause this video at any point to take in further information, but the four C's of online safety predominantly are content, contact, conduct, and commercialism. And some of the names of these are quite self-explanatory, and I'll give you some examples. Uh, obviously, some examples are written up on these displays here too. Uh, so content is anything online that we see, so imagery, written text, uh, video content which is not, not good, really, you know, in many senses. And as you can see, examples of that include pornography, disinformation, hate um, material online, also as well, extremism, violence, content online, would all be classed as online content safety issues. Contact um, involves things like unwanted interactions with people online. So that can involve grooming, it can involve exploitation, it can also involve negative peer pressure as well. Conduct is about a, a person's own behaviours online and that's sometimes known as their digital footprint and basically you know, things that we say and do online should be in line with what we would be happy to say and do in person. And then the most recent addition to the strands of online safety is commercialism. And as the name suggests, that is anything that involves monetary uh, risks and exploitation online. So it could include gambling but also includes um, inappropriate advertising, financial scams, hacking, also as well um, unwanted purchases. So when, for example, I've, I've come across cases where young people have used their parents or carers' credit card um, to purchase coins and tokens in an app and sometimes racked up a considerable bill. Um, what we've, I've divided the four C's and expanded these into and elaborated them into is this infographic which is displayed around school and again you can pause this at any point and take further note of any of the particular issues summarised on here uh, but we have the four C's and then I've then expanded that to look at some more specific self-explanatory issues which you can see on screen. What I always say to young people and I'd like to relay this to adults uh, is that if anything online concerns you, be it something listed on here or, or anything else for that matter, there are three specific steps that we need to take. The first one is to get evidence um, because online content can be edited, removed, deleted. Some cases for something say like Snapchat, uh, the content disappears automatically when the user sets it to, so maybe after one view or after 24 hours, etc. So we need evidence to back up a, a concern really and to evidence what you know has been shared. We then need to block and, and disconnect from people or, or, or groups of people uh, who are causing concern. So, you know, for example, if someone's saying something nasty on Facebook, the uh, once you've got evidence, the next step that a young person would need to take would be to block any individuals to prevent further upset being caused. And then the third step is to tell, uh, and that's, you know, report your concerns to an adult, be it a parent or a carer, a family member, um, a member of staff at school, myself, a member of the safeguarding team, head of year, a uh, wide range of people who young people can share their concerns with, but these are the three steps that we need to be taking in the event of an online safety concern. So what I'd like to do in this video briefing is draw some particular attention to quite prominent issues uh, in and around online safety at the moment and go through these in, in detail. So the ones I'm gonna go through is, we've got filtering and monitoring, uh, online bullying, uh, and sexting. So they're gonna be the, the main three strands that I'm gonna delve into. So filtering and monitoring then, um, to distinguish between the two of them, filtering systems is what we use at school and we use them in order to block and prevent websites and, and content being accessed in the first place. So um, a wide range of different categories of websites, as you can imagine, 
which are not suitable for young people or maybe not suitable for school, uh, are blocked and are not accessible. Alongside the filtering system that we use at school, we also have monitoring systems in place that can monitor a user's activity live or it can look at their activity historically to make sure everyone's sort of safe and, and you know using systems appropriately. The monitoring systems are in place purely to safeguard people. They're not there to spy on people. Um, it is there just to simply monitor and safeguard young people. We do have to have these um, systems in place too, by, by law. So under statutory guidance, we do have to have filtering and monitoring systems in place. So the filtering provision at Ormiston and Bolingbroke Academy is a company called Fortinet. That's the software that we have installed and that filters inappropriate content from being accessed in the first place. So probably as a parent or a carer, your main concern will be, okay, well, you're using Fortinet, you've got to have filtering, is it any good? I've taken some uh, testing of our filtering system and you can see the results of this here. And as you can see, different categories of content that needs to be filtered from schools. Uh, and as you can see, our filtering provider, TalkStreet in association with Fortinet, is, is effective and is doing its job pretty good. In terms of network monitoring then, to monitor activity, um, we have a piece of software called Impero Education Pro. That allows staff at school to monitor activity live or historic activity can be accessed and viewed. Part of that system as well is automated alerts are generated for anything that might be a particular cause of concern. And that is then screened and monitored by myself and the rest of the safeguarding team. And where necessary, we will intervene with a, an automated alert. So I'll, I'll just show you some examples. So in terms of the automated alerts then, these come from a bank of different categories really. So as you can see, wide range of different categories which can generate alerts and anything of these nature. So you can see in terms of bullying and so on, there's over a thousand t terms linked with that. Uh, mental health and emotional wellbeing is over 250, 274 specific ones so these are the comment banks and i'll show you what an example looks like so this is actually myself this and I'm, i've got no issue sharing this um so this is me planning a lesson looking at gambling and as you can see this is the information that's presented then up on the top right here so you can see the username so you can see that's me uh, and then the trigger which has generated a cause for concern is the word gamble because obviously for young people gambling is illegal uh, until you're 18 also as well it is as i've talked about previously an online safety risk specifically under the commercialism strand so if a user was to type in gamble on the school network like i've done here that would take a screenshot like it's done in this example that would then go to the safeguarding team and myself as an automated email and then we'd review that and act it as we needed to so if it was purely as part of someone's schoolwork that's absolutely fine that's what we call a false positive However, if the alert was generated maybe of a safeguarding nature, then we would act accordingly. Likewise, if someone had typed something which is not appropriate and is therefore a misuse issue, uh, then we'd act upon that as well. So that's a little overview of filtering and monitoring. Um, the next one I want to move on to is cyberbullying. There's a definition there, um, basically online unkind behaviours, repeated negative behaviours online is therefore classed as cyberbullying. Um, some statistics, one in five children between the age of 10 and 15 have, area, have say they've experienced at least one form of cyberbullying. Common examples include uh, name calling, swearing, insults, um, also as well what we've seen recently, not just uh, connected to school, but in a wider sort of guise on that, will be sort of content made online targeting people. So for example, say a, a TikTok video um, being pretty nasty towards individuals, you know, and, and things like that. Some wider examples, okay, and I say I've talked about, you know, TikTok videos or, or posts online targeting people, but uh, these are some wider examples of behaviours that can lead to be classed as cyberbullying. And again, you can pause these as, as and when you need to, to take a more note. I think as well, what, what sometimes what it is important to distinguish with there is a difference between cyber goal, cyber bullying and peer conflict and arguments you know and, and so cyber bullying is targeting one person repeated negatively um peer conflict and arguments is when we get a sort of a, a trade-off you know and people are acting tit for tat uh, to coin a phrase um and sometimes there's a fine line 
between that and, and what I always recommend to young people is if they feel targeted by cyberbullying is is not to respond with you know more negative behaviours back to someone because that becomes a, a peer conflict issue. We get the evidence, we block the individual, tell the adults, and then we'll deal with that accordingly. Uh, the other sort of area of concern which is prominent for young people is, is about stranger danger online. So this was a 1981 child safety campaign. I do actually remember these being sort of connected to lampposts and things when I was a kid growing up, saying no to strangers. Well, these days, I think strangers don't approach children in person on the street. They're more likely to communicate with children online trying to connect with them on social media and then sort of uh, you know befriend them on social media what i always say to young people is that an online stranger presents an online danger and that you should only have contact online with people who you know and people who you trust and if you don't know someone in person and or you don't trust them then you shouldn't really have contact with them online you know and, and what i always say to young people as well is from time to time go through your friends list, go through your followers lists on social media and bin off people who you don't know if you don't know them, you don't trust them, they could potentially be a risk to your well-being. Let's bid them off and, you know, let's cut contact. The number of followers that you have on Snapchat or on Instagram or anything like that is not a competition. I think it's really important as well that parents and carers uh, share that message and, and, you know, we're all sort of sharing the same, singing from the same hymn sheet to make sure that young people only connect with people who they know and people who they trust online. Really, really important that for me. Group chats can be a bit of a cause for concern as well, uh, in terms of young people presenting issues. So, you know, messages and media shared in group chats can sometimes be a cause for concern, can be inappropriate. Um, like I've talked about then, sometimes group chats can introduce you to strangers. And as I've said, online strangers presented online danger. And also as well, sometimes people can be pressured into doing things maybe they don't agree with, but because of the the motion of a group chat then they, they sort of follow suit and also as well sometimes things can get out of hand in a group chat and can become a cyberbullying concern so maybe you know five six people target one individual in a group chat and, and that then becomes a cyberbullying issue uh, the second issue that i, I want to draw some particular attention to is, is sexting and again we've got a definition here from the infographic which i shared earlier on basically um indecent imagery well, that can be nude, semi-nude, it can be um, you know, video-based or photograph-based, but basically sexting is indecent imagery, which is a prominent issue for young people. There are many reasons why a young, people is, a young person might get involved in sexting, you know, feeling in love with someone, feeling harassed or pressured, um, because of maybe a long-distance relationship, maybe because they've received an indecent image and are pressured into sending one back. So there are many motivations, however, the risks that I sort of uh, associate with that, you know, are, are quite prominent. Um, so it is important, really, that young people know the risks and dangers of sexting and, and don't sort of succumb to these motivations and make sure that no imagery is, is shared and, and any images that are sent or received are reported to an adult uh, as a priority. So that's a quick overview on sexting. Uh, so what I'd like to do is, you know, what can you do to safeguard your child or children for online safety? Um, we have, as a partnership with OBA, we have partnerships with the Safer Schools and National Online Safety Apps, which as a parent or carer, you can access free of charge, and I'll share some information about how you can do that shortly. Um, I think it's important that you're know, holding frequent conversations with young people about what they do online, any causes for concerns that they may have, you know, and, and sort of what's acceptable and what isn't, and some of the topics of the conversation, what I've talked about in this presentation as well, uh, also maybe a, a you know, conversation starter. It is important to ensure children's privacy settings are secure. We know that young people are likely to use Instagram and Snapchat. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Uh, really speaking, it should only be when they're over 13, but generally we do know that it happens at a younger age. Privacy settings need to be locked down and secure. We also check that um, children are not interacting with unwanted individuals or unknown individuals online, and our idea of an online stranger presenting an online danger. Also as well, digital conduct, digital footprints, uh, you know, having, again, those conversations with your children at home to say about, you know, just make sure that you're doing things that you would only do in person, that you'd be happy to, for maybe a parent, a carer, a grandparent, a teacher to be an earshot of. If, you know, if you wouldn't say it in person, then please don't say it online. 
Um, again, just to tie in number six here, ties in with the online conduct and, and thinking before you speak, really, thinking before you post. I think as well it's important in the interest of physical and mental well-being and plus as well obviously in the interest of academic progress that children don't spend too much time online and do sort of have detoxes from screens uh, from time to time and you know get some fresh air and, and, and exercise and things like that. Also as well it's important that we are teaching young people that not everything that we see online is reliable. Um, quite often you know there's disinformation online in the last couple of years certainly with the pandemic and stuff like that there's been a lot of disinformation online and it is important to say that just because someone shared it on Facebook doesn't mean that it's the truth personal information or images online should never be shared for, for you know for obvious reasons um, they're personal for a reason and they should remain personal and that's a real sort of you know important point for young people because sometimes it's quite easy to share a picture in your school uniform but actually that then identifies which school you go to and, and can be quite a cause for concern and a final tip um, is just to you know ensure that children report anything online and tell a trusted adult with anything that is a cause for concern so you know it's fine that from time to time issues may arise it's important that they, they do report that to an adult and, and share that concern and, and make sure that they get the support that they need in terms of your settings at home um, your internet provider whether it's Sky, BT, Virgin Media, whoever, Vodafone, can provide you with guidance on how to apply your settings to be more family friendly. Uh, and the Safer Internet, Internet Matters, saferinternet.org, provide more guidance. I'll show you some guidance as to where you can find links to that. Uh, there are some apps as well that can be used to oversee and monitor children's activity on their devices. So there's Google Family Link for the Android platform. Also, as well, there's Apple Family Share. Um, they allow you to you know monitor and control access and, and to limit access and things like that um, so well worth checking out depending on what platform you and or your children use there are some more sophisticated apps out there which offer more detailed features and monitors and stuff like that but they are paid for however these two apps are downloadable for free um, so in terms of finding access okay and, and sort of links to wider sources of support on the OBA website if you click on for students and then go to online safety there is a, a dedicated page for internet safety digital safeguarding where there are some more backups some conversation starters links to privacy guides links to where finding out sources of support also links to um, download the safer schools and the national online safety app so so there's follow-up actions if you go to school website for students and then on online, online safety there's a wealth of information there there's also my contact details there so that you can get in touch with me directly should you require any further support advice guidance or of course to report a concern so just as a follow-up um, if you do have any questions queries comments then please don't hesitate to get in touch as i say it's my email address is, is presented on screen i'm more than happy to expand on these conversations provide further support um, and obviously i am the first protocol for online safety concerns so i thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation i hope you found it useful please feel free to go back to any point and you'll find out more information but as i say the online safety page on the OBA website and also directly to me if you do have any need for support thank you for your time take care